The Football Association kicked off its 150th year back where it all started, at the site of the old Freemasons Tavern in London. England managers past and present joined football's biggest names to pay tribute to the FA. The England Awards debuted in February at St George's Park, and it proved a night to remember with Stephen Gerrard, Dave Clark and Steph Houghton all bagging gongs. England welcomed Brazil to Wembley with a ton up for Stevie G, before Frank Lampard settled matters with this strike. And later that month, Bobby Moore took centre stage again, 20 years after he said goodbye. March saw old friends reunited, and Stephen Gerrard summed up the FA's grassroots goals. The three Lions put on a great display in San Marino, but could only draw against Montenegro. FA Cup fever took hold in April, with Man City and Wigan booking their spots in the Wembley Showpiece. And it was Ben Watson who emerged as hero of the day with his late header, ensuring a fairy tale final for the Latics. April saw Wembley mark its 90th year in star, with two cup final heroes of yesteryear coming together again. And our search to find relatives of the founding fathers of football captured the world's imagination and proved Ebenezer Morley really is the daddy. Eleven more big names came under the arch in May when the Royal Mail launched a special collection, and John Barnes, Gordon Banks, Bobby Moore were among those gaining the stamp of approval. FA legends returned to the pitch for an unbelievable army charity match at Reading, and Ben Shepherd stole the show with this stunner. Congress and the Champions League final were perfect birthday gifts from UEFA, with a Dutch flyer settling a thrilling all-German contest in London, and the FA president hailed the occasion as a true festival of football. After 22-year absence, the Irish returned to Wembley on Ashley's big night before this magic moment at the American R. And May was capped off when good memories were made with a view to a Rio return. England news stuttered in the summer, but Ross Barkley took his chance to shine at the Under-20 World Cup. And Rachel Yankee became England's most capped player with 126, as the women's game marked 20 years as part of the FA. After David Bernstein bowed out, Greg Dyke checked in as FA chairman. And we also thanked Stuart Pearce and Hope Powell for their excellent service. So Bobby Robson Day lived up to the billing with tens of thousands turning out at 150 grassroots events across the country in August. And Manchester United won the Community Shield before Scotland headed to Wembley for the Teenage Cancer Trust International. Move over Shakespeare & Co, a date at the British Library saw the FA Minute Book containing football's original laws take pride of place. And World Cup matters resumed with Moldova dispatched and a point gained in Ukraine where Frank marked his century. Liverpool ladies won the WSL and a special map marked 150 years of football and the tune. October was a royal celebration, with the Duke opening up the palace for 150 grassroots heroes and the first ever match in the Queen's back garden. And finally, Roy's boys booked their place in Brazil with convincing wins over Montenegro and Poland. Come on, England! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the FA to this magnificent Grand Connaught Rooms here in central London. FA Chairman, President Blatter, President Platini, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all here this evening to this, the Football Association's 150th anniversary gala dinner. Here's to another 150 years.